ladies, I'm Menopause Barbie, your Menopause Taylor. Now you know that I'm a gynecologist, so I know about a lot more things than just menopause. And any time a general gynecologic issue pertains to menopause in any way, I teach you about it. So you get to learn about all sorts of things that are not strictly limited to menopause. One of the things that affects many women is fibroids. So this tutorial is an education on fibroids. Now you can well imagine that there's more to fibroids than what I can cover in one single video. So there will be three videos on fibroids. This one addresses what fibroids are. The next one will address the effect of menopause on fibroids. And the one after that will address your ability to take HRT if you have fibroids. You don't need the book or the notes, but you will need to watch closely because I have props to show you. So let's begin with the word fibroids or fibroids of the uterus. That reminds me, when I was a resident in ob -GYN, we took care of a lot of indigent, uneducated, and non-English speaking patients. And I did my medical training in the largest medical center in the world, which is the Texas Medical Center. And many patients didn't understand the terms that we used for various things. And fibroids of the uterus was one of those things. And since many of them couldn't read or understand English, they just interpreted our medical words as best they could by how they sounded. And one of the most common misinterpretations was fibroids of the uterus. So one day I had a patient who came in and said she had fireballs of the Eucharist. <laughs> now, I'm pretty good at miming patients and using their words to communicate with them. If they say I hurt down there, then I adopt the term down there for, to refer to their genitalia. And if they call their urethra their wee-wee, I call it their wee-wee. But this time I had to pause a bit. <laughs> and then it hit me. <laughs> she was repeating what she had heard. And since the word fibroids was unfamiliar to her and the word uterus wasn't that familiar to her, she heard the words with which she was familiar. Fireballs of the Eucharist were fibroids of the uterus. <laughs> In any case, gynecology encompasses a lot more than just gynecology. It involves communication skills, psychology, human relations, you name it. So let's talk about fibroids of the uterus and you'll know a lot about them. Fibroids of the uterus is not even the medical term for what we're discussing today. But you probably wish it were because the medical term is not an easy one to remember. It's uterine lyomyomata. I can only imagine what my patient would have repeated if she had heard that term. That's a difficult one for anybody. So you will not hear me say that again. I will use the word fibroids. So when I say the word fibroid, what does it sound like? Doesn't it sound like the word fibrous? And that's convenient because fibroids resemble fibrous tissue. So that's how they got the name fibroids. Fibroids can grow in your uterus, and here's how that happens. Your uterus consists of two types of tissue, muscular tissue and fibrous tissue. Now the muscular tissue is what enables your uterus to do what any other muscle in your body can do. It can relax. It can stretch and it can contract. This is Play-Doh. I'm going to use this Play-Doh to represent the muscular tissue of your uterus. So your uterus, muscle, your uterus is a muscle. And most of the time, it's just sitting around, hanging out, doing nothing, relaxing. But when you get pregnant, it stretches to accommodate the growing baby. And when it's time to deliver the baby, it needs to expel your or it needs to expel your period, it contracts. But your uterine muscle needs something to give it support. So it has fiber. Fiber is the same thing that supports plants. Have you ever wondered how it is that a plant can grow upward defying gravity? 
Well, it's because it has fiber. So fiber is like the skeleton for a plant. It gives it support. In your uterus, you have fiber too, but it's more like little flakes. So I'm going to use this oatmeal, some oatmeal flakes, as the fibrous part of your uterus. And it's sprinkled into the muscle, okay? So you have fibrous tissue in the muscle. So now we're going to make it shaped like a uterus, somewhat like a uterus, right? Okay, so here you have a uterus. A fibroid develops when a particle of that fibrous tissue starts growing within the muscular tissue. And it starts out really tiny, like this little tiny pearl. But over time, it slowly grows and it gets a little bigger, like this pearl. And then it gets a little bigger, like this pearl. And then it can keep growing and become as large as this pearl. It can even get bigger than a pearl, like this. Or bigger than that, like this. Or like this. It can get so big that it's much bigger than the uterus itself. So you get the idea. Fibroids are masses of fibrous tissue that grow in your uterine muscle. And usually, there isn't just one fibroid. They tend to occur in multiples. It's common to find six, eight, 12 in a single uterus. Over time, as multiple fibroids grow, the uterus goes from looking like this to looking like this. All these white balls are fibroids. And as you can see, they distort the uterus into an irregular shape. And the uterus is much larger than usual. Now this is a life-size model of a pelvis. And what you have here is the uterus and the bladder. So I'm going to take this uterus out. And as you can see, the uterus is not very large. So now compare this normal uterus to this fibroid uterus. Big difference in size, isn't there? And as you can see in this model of a fibro-uterus, the fibroids can be in various locations. A fibroid can be deep inside the uterus, right next to the inner lining. And we call that kind of fibroid a submucous fibroid. Or a fibroid can be right in the middle of the thick muscular wall between the in the inside and the outside, and we call that one intramural. Mural is like the word for wall, like a mural on a wall. And if you speak other languages, a lot of other languages use the word mural for the word wall. Or a fibroid can be near the outside wall of your uterus, far from the inner lining. We call these subserosal. A fibroid can even dangle off the inner or outer surface of the uterus, like a mushroom, with a stalk. And we call those pedunculated, which comes from the word pedicle. Now, most women who have fibroids have a variety. So they have something like this. They have them in all these different locations. So their uteri look like this model. Of course. You probably look at these and you think, holy cow, does that mean fibroids are cancerous? And the answer is no, no, no. Fibroids are benign and they are very, very common. Fibroids are present in 40% of women, at least. Some autopsy findings 
suggests that they're present in a full 50% of women after the age of 40. But they're very rare before the age of 20. So what happens between your 20s and your 40s to cause fibroids? You have periods and pregnancies. And what fuels your periods and pregnancies? Estrogen. So estrogen is what make, makes fibroids grow. Now most women don't even know they have fibroids because they cause no symptoms most of the time. But as they get larger and larger, they can cause a variety of symptoms including heavy bleeding, abnormal bleeding, pelvic pain, or pelvic pressure. Here's why they cause the bleeding. Remember that I told you your uterus is a muscle? Now, it's a muscle, and that means it can contract. All muscles can contract. So anytime there's bleeding, your uterus contracts to squeeze on the blood vessels and stop the bleeding. But look, with this big fibroid in the way, the muscle can't contract. It's trying, but the fibroid is in the way. So the uterus keeps bleeding. That's why women with fibroids may have heavy bleeding with their periods, or they may have bleeding between periods. And all those attempts at contracting to stop the bleeding are painful. Your menstrual cramps were nothing but contractions of your uterine muscle. Were they painful? And labor pains are nothing but contractions of your uterine muscle to expel a baby. Were they painful? Well, that's why women with fibroids can have pelvic pain. And fibroids are hard. They're hard and they're heavy. And the bigger they get, the more they weigh. And all that extra weight that sits on your pelvic structures, pressing down on them, cause pelvic pressure. So that's why many women with fibroids have pelvic pressure. Now normally fibroids grow very, very slowly. But pregnancy makes them grow more rapidly. And as long as they cause no symptoms and they grow slowly and are not too large, you can just ignore them. But if they do cause symptoms, or if they grow quickly, or if they get too large, you may have to do something about them. And the treatments differ depending on the fibroid size, location, symptoms, as well as your reproductive desires. So here's a summary. Fibroids are benign growths of the fibrous tissue in your muscular uterus. Estrogen is what makes them grow. They're very common and you can ignore them as long as they grow slowly, they cause no significant symptoms, and they don't get too large. So the next thing to address is what happens to fibroids at the time of menopause? And that's what I'll discuss in the next video tutorial. So be sure to come back and watch that one. In the meantime, know that I do one-on-one -on -one consultations for all this stuff, menopause or gynecology or whatever. I've had women consult me for all sorts of things like these. They like the way I explain everything to them. So if you need me, I'm here. Just go to my website, menopausetaylor.me, and to get in touch and register for whatever you want. Um, and I will see you in a week. In the meantime, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Bye.